Hello guys, this is Mike from theprogramming.org. Welcome to your third tutorial in the socket series. Um, this one we're going to code the server. And if you want to take a little refresher of what the client class looks like, we had a socket and we have a buffered reader for input and also an input stream reader inside of that and a pr print stream for output. So we're going to have pretty much identical code except for the way the socket is set up. So let's create the server socket right now. We're going to create a new Java class within our the correct uh, project folder. So we're just going to call this server. And I do want a main method in there. And just to refresh your memories, I'm going to code the whole thing. I'm not going to copy and paste it. But let's make some variables at the top. We're going to say private server socket. And we'll just call that server socket. Can't spell. There we go. And make sure the object starts with capital and make sure that the variable is lowercase. And now we want to also create a normal socket. And for this one, we're going to call this accept socket. And that name will make more sense once we write our code. Okay? And now we want a print stream and a buffered reader. So private print stream, and that will be our output variable that we want to call it. And then we want our input variable to be of the type buffered reader. So buffered reader, and we're going to call that input. Okay, so control shift O for organize your imports at the top. And why did that not? I wonder why I didn't automatically import buffer reader. Oh well. So we're gonna have another method and we're gonna call it run again, public void run. And inside of this, we're going to instantiate the server socket. And so we're gonna call its variable name and we're going to create it. So new server socket. And what this is, is this is the server part of the socket, uh, hence the name server socket. And we're not going to give it an IP address. This is the, this is the computer or the location that it, the client is trying to connect to. So all we have to do is give it the port number that it's listening on. And in this case, we had decided that uh, 9999 was the port number. So that's the only parameter that it takes in. You can also make what I believe to be a, called a backlog. Like if I wanted to say a thousand, that would be how many, the maximum amount of clients that can uh, try to join the server socket or connect to the server socket. But I'm not worried about that right now. We're just using one client and one server. So let's surround this with the try catch. Okay, get rid of that to do. Makes it a little ugly. Give it some space so it's going to look all crowded. And now we're going to use our accept socket, accept socket equals. And what the accept socket is, is the server socket just sits on this port listening for clients to join it. And once a client uh, tries to join it by going to this IP address, which in this case is localhost, and attaching to the port number, which is where the server socket is, it will, if it accepts it, it will throw a socket um, or ex create a socket variable, and that's where the communication will be. The communication will not be over the server socket, that's just for listening for the client. So now we got to create a new socket, and the accept socket is of the type socket, except for we're not going to say new socket, we're going to say server socket dot accept. Okay? So that is, this is pretty much the only code that is different from the client side so far in this application. Um, they can get quite a bit more complicating. Right now, all we're going to do is print one thing to the other and see if it gets accepted and received. So now we can create our output and input streams inside of here. Output equals new print stream. And we want to call the socket that 
it's outputting from, and it's accept socket, not server socket. So accept socket dot get output stream. End it with a semicolon, and now we can create our input uh, variable. Input equals new buffered reader, and we're also going to instantiate a new input stream reader inside of that parameter. So new input stream reader, and inside of the input stream reader, what that's going to read. Let's import it real quick. Get rid of that red line. Uh, we're going to um, get the input stream. So we're going to have to say accept socket dot get input stream. There we go. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to listen for any messages that the client sent. And since it, this is always up to the coder, but I have already have it so it right off the bat as soon as it's accepted it will print out to the server hello server so just to match that I'm gonna start off by reading or listening for anything that's being sent so I'm gonna create a string object string I'm gonna call it message equals input dot read line and that's coming from the buffered reader and what we can do is we can print this out to our own console, which in Eclipse will be down here, what the message was. So system.out.println, and we're going to say message as its parameter. And now we also want to say if message does not equal null, we can write back to the client and what that means by message does not equal null is that we've received a message if we haven't received a message we shouldn't this code won't run so we're going to say output dot print line and we're just going to say welcome so what should happen when we run this code is we need to make sure that server is run first and then you run client and that way server will be listening on this port number and client will go to the IP address which we're already on that IP address and will go to that socket and connect to it and it will send it should output hello server so in your server console down here you're gonna see hello server and then we're going to, in the server class, we're going to read that and print it out. And it's going to say if message does not equal null. So pretty much if you got a message, it's going to print out welcome. And not going to print it out to the console, but it's going to send that out to the client. So in your client console, then you should be able to say, uh, see the welcome message because we received it right here and then we printed it to the console and it gets a little bit confusing in Eclipse or any any type of uh, IDE unless it's a GUI and you actually have two distinct boxes um, so I'm going to show you how to switch between the consoles in Eclipse so let's save everything I think I need to actually instantiate a server here so server we'll just call it lowercase s server equals new server and we're just going to say server.run. Okay. So right now, if there was something down here running, uh, we would have the option of either the red square that would um, end the program that's running or terminate it. And then we have an X, and then it's like two X's, like kind of one in front of each other. And if you want to run something with sockets the best case is to just hit that because if you've already been trying to test this over and over again there might be a chance that the server still kinda of on so you're gonna get exceptions thrown that the sockets already there so make sure every time that you run this that you clear out uh, this section right here so let's everything saved let's run our server okay so down here our server application is running in the in the console and that's our terminate button and now we want to go to client and we want to run the client 
so the client got welcome and if we go to our server there we go it should say hello server so there is the basic um, communication between them in the next tutorial I'll do a quick one on probably have a while loop so we can keep com uh, communication going and we don't just have one input and one output for each uh, situation so thank you guys for watching and while I'm actually on here let me uh, let's see I'm in the server let me get rid of the client real quick I'm gonna turn off the client with the single X but that means that the server's still on if I would have done this it would have removed all of these applications that are running so let me try to rerun the server right now so you're gonna run into a bunch of problems because the server had already been running so let's just turn that off and get rid of all of these for our future tutorial thank you guys for watching again